Hello. Welcome to Bars and Bells. My name's Lauren. You'll notice we have a little bit of a change in scenery today. Welcome to our house. This is our living room. And look at that, you can do it at home. So, it's just me today. No Ian. I know. Don't leave. Stay with me here. You'll be stuck with me for the next 40 minutes working on our restore and recharge practice here where we'll be getting moving and grooving and just waking up to feel good. <clears throat> Any questions, leave them in the comment section and we'll get started. Just making sure everything's good. We'll get started lying down on our back, doing our breathing, and we're gonna stay lying down for a little bit. And then we'll stand up eventually and move on from there. You'll need some space. You might need a chair to balance on after. Other than that, let's get started. I also have my notes here just so I remember what to do. Start lying down on your back. Ah, this is nice. We're gonna take some breaths here. So hands on your belly, feet planted on the floor. Just start slowing your breathing down in and exhale through your nose, filling belly, chest stays quiet. Inhale to fill, exhale release. Belly rises and falls as you do this. One more, just finding your breath here. On this inhale, we're gonna inhale for four seconds. Inhale for four. Hold for four. Exhale for four. Hold for four. Repeat, inhale for four seconds. Hold for four seconds. Exhale for four. Hold for four. Repeat, inhale for five seconds. Hold for five. Exhale for five. Hold for five. Inhale for six. Hold for six. Hold for six. Inhale for four. Exhale for four. One more time. Inhale for four. Exhale for four. Nice. Try to keep that nose breathing going. Nice. Try to keep that nose breathing going as we progress through our class here. Um, I found that six seconds challenging. Keeping that six second inhale, six seconds exhale. Whew, that was hard. We'll stay lying on our back and we'll go to our ankles here. I'm just gonna do a quarter turn so you can see my nice ankles. I'm gonna take my hand behind my leg and looking at my foot, point my foot and then pull my foot to my shin and point my foot and pull my foot to my shin. Now I'm gonna wave my foot side to side without moving my knee. So only my ankle is waving from side to side here. Last one. Go back to a pointed foot and let's draw our center, our circle towards the center line. So slowly articulating an ankle circle around. Only the ankle's moving. I'm coming around the outside of my circle here and ending up back at the pointed foot. Same direction again, one more time, towards the midline. Pulling that foot on straight, all the way over, pointed foot. Now switch directions to the outside side. I was just outside of grass all over my feet, towards inside, and to that pointed foot, 
And one last time to the outside, scraping the edge of the circle, pulling through center, and back to that pointed foot. Now from here, can you shake it out? Can you be loose in that ankle and calf? Loosey goose, loosey goose. Three, two, and then bring that leg down and switch. We'll do the same thing on the other side. One knee comes up, gently gripping behind the knee. Looking at your ankle, point your foot, and then pull it towards you. And then point and pull. And then from that pulled position, don't move your knees, but wave the foot from side to side, ankle only. Back through center, full point. Slowly draw that circle towards your center line. Two circles this direction, taking your time, trying to scrape all the corners out. Back to that pointed foot, same direction again. All the way around. Nice. And then from here, switch directions to the outside. Pull that on straight. And point last time to the outside. Pull and finish that circle. Shake it out just like the other side. Loosen the ankle, loosen the calf. Bring the leg down, stay lying on your back. From here, yes, we're lying down, feet are planted on the floor. You didn't have to rotate, I just did that for your viewing pleasure. Slowly extend one knee and straighten that leg. And just be playful about it. As this leg is straight, think about pulling the foot to the shin, pointing the foot, pull the foot to the shin again, and then bend the knee and switch knees as you do that. Same thing, other leg, gently straighten, point the foot, pull the foot, point the foot, bend and switch. Same thing, trying to straighten that knee, maybe it gets a little bit straighter this time. Bend and switch. Try a dorsiflex foot, try a pointed foot. It's probably easier to straighten your knee with the pointed foot. Bend and switch. One more time each leg. Point the foot. Pull. Try to straighten. Bend and switch. Last time, pull the foot. Point the foot. Pull. Bend. Great. We're going to bring one leg back up. So pull one knee towards your chest. Gently straighten it. Let's put our pointed foot on. From here, we're gonna do our internal and external rotation at the hip. So in its socket, I want you to rotate that leg so you start to see the inseam towards your face. Your knee stays nice and straight. Back through center, and then rotate so you're trying to see the outseam of your leg. Back to center. Internal, sorry, external rotation so you see your inseam. Back to center. Internal rotation so you see your outseam. One more time each way. Straight knee, external rotation, center, internal rotation, center. Flex the foot, bend the knee, switch legs. Straighten the leg, point the foot, get rid of this grass, that's ridiculous. There we go. Point the foot, external rotation, show me your inseam. Back to center, internal rotation, Show me the outside of that leg. External, maybe your hands are on your hips so you're not moving your hips, you're only moving that leg in the socket. One more time, external rotation, knee stays straight. Internal rotation, back to center, flex your foot, bend the knee, put it down. Whew. Sorry, it's a little different by myself. There's no big chart paper here to tell me what next to do. Stay lying on your back, arms extended out. Now straighten your legs out. Bring one knee in over your hip. Let it fall a little bit to the side. Your shoulders should both still be on the floor. My knee falls just past my hip. Maybe you can get a straighter leg with that pointed foot, but can you try to keep it straight and flex your foot? Oof. Now bend the knee, pull it back to center. Put it down, other side. 
Knee comes in, shoulders stay heavy, falls slightly across, gently straightens at the knee, maybe a little point, maybe a little, oh. Bend the knee, bring it back to center, straighten. One more time each side. Knee comes in, falls over a bit, straightens, oh. This is a huge stretch for me down that lateral side of the leg as well as behind my knee. Bend the knee, back to center. Last time on this leg. I hope we're even. I'm sorry if we're not. I wanna have my assistant to tell me. Try to straighten that knee. Back to center and let it rest. Yes, I believe we are even because I started on my left leg. Okay, we are gonna flip a little bit here into our all fours position to warm up our hands and our wrists. So find a nice comfortable position from your knees and place your hands on the ground. Spread your fingers out nice and wide. Pull your shoulders down out of your ears. And first, rotate so your elbow pits or your blood donations face forward. Keep those fingers screwed into the floor. Rotate those elbow pits backwards. Rotate them forwards. Rotate them backwards. One more time, rotate them forward, keep them forward. Gently shift your weight forward into those wrists and hands. Turning your fingers white, you're pushing so hard into the floor. Now push yourself back. Keep those elbow pits forward. Show, slowly shift your weight forward again into your fingers and then push yourself back. Great. Let's do a quarter turn of those hands. So fingers are going to fit sideways now. Again, pack your shoulders, rotate your elbow pits forward and gently shift your weight side to side. Again, as I do this, my weight presses into the first knuckles so right here across my hand, into the first knuckles of my wrist, not just directly through the wrist joint. From side to side here, pushing yourself back to center. We have one more rotation. Actually, we have two. Fingers now turn around to face you. So fingers are facing you, palms away. If this is too much, you could do the same thing from kneeling and just use your hand to do that stretch or a wall. Here, fingers facing you, shoulders down, elbow pits forward, slowly sit back a little bit. You're gonna feel that big stretch up through the front of your forearms as you do this. Now look down at your hands, sit back a bit, push your pinkies heavy into the floor. Then push your ring fingers heavy. Then your middle fingers, your index fingers, your thumb fingers are heavy. Sit back, gently bend your elbows and peel your hands up off the floor, shaking it out. Nice. Great. We have one more wrist stretch here. One hand goes normal. Back a hand goes down. Pull your shoulder down. Rotate that elbow pit forward. Gently sit back. This is a big stretch for me through the front of that forearm. Muscles for golfing, muscles for digging. Then bend the elbow and peel that off the floor. Shake it out. That hand goes normal. Last one, back a hand down, pull the shoulder down, rotate that elbow pit forward. Maybe sit back a little bit into that. Is this side different than the other side? Feeling okay? Bend the elbow, peel that hand off the floor. I'm gonna stay kneeling for this activity. We're gonna go through our head neck moves. If kneeling is uncomfortable, either a tall kneel, a cross-legged sit, sit in a chair, whatever you'd like. We're gonna be here for a couple seconds though. From your tall position, I still have that kink in my neck from my funny sleep the other night, so we're gonna try working that out. Gently tuck your chin towards your chest, pushing your vertebrae gently back behind you. And then slowly keep that tuck, but slowly start looking towards the ceiling. Now, when you're looking towards the ceiling here, open your mouth 
and then close your jaw over. Then you should get a big stretch up the front of your neck. Bring your head back on straight. Gently tuck your chin again. Chin comes towards chest. Shoulders stay stationary. Slowly roll back up, looking towards the ceiling. Once you've looked up, open your mouth. Close your mouth. Relax. Pull your head on straight. I really like that one. I hope you did too. Back to center. We're going to do some rotations here. I put a rod through your spine, through your head here. I want you to rotate on that rod. Turn to look over a shoulder. Nothing else moves. Back through center. Look over a shoulder. Nothing moves. One more time, two more times each way. Try not to rotate that upper body as you're rotating your head neck. Last one. Maybe each time you found a millimeter more room there. Center. And center. Great. From here, we're going to do our lateral flexion. This time, an ear tips towards the shoulder. I like to pull down on that other side. Sometimes I even open my hand and almost reach away with that opposing arm, and I get a nice stretch through my scalenes and down the front of my pec and even in through my bicep elbow. Then pull your head back on straight. Don't be floppy. Ear to shoulder. Maybe extend that hand or arm a little bit. Palm faces forward. Oh, that's nice. Pull that head back on straight. One more time each side. Ear to shoulder. If that's enough, just stay with that. If you want a little extra, I put that rod through your head on a 45 degree angle. You pivot on that rod like you're sniffing your armpit. Back through center. Maybe pivot to look towards the ceiling. Back to center. Head pulls on straight. Other side. Ear to shoulder. Oh. Chin turns down, ear to shoulder, chin turns up to center, heads on straight. Nice. That felt great. We're going to come into our low back here. We'll still be on all fours. This time, we'll be isolating just our pelvis or our low back. Hands under shoulders. Oh, now I have grass everywhere. Somebody's going to have to clean this house. Let's not kick our water either. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Low back only. Slightly pull the floor together underneath you. That creates tension, and I start rounding my low back, so tucking my tail underneath. If you don't know what you're doing yet, just watch. From here, I'm going to maybe push the floor a little bit away, and my tail is going to tilt to the ceiling. Tail tilts. I pull the floor together, tail tucks under. Oh, abs, abs, abs. Push the floor away, tail tilts to the ceiling. Pull the floor under, tail tucks under. One more time each way. Tail tips to the ceiling, tail tucks under. Nice. Hold, then find a neutral place and come up again. We'll do our upper back in one second, but we're going to get into our shoulders. Again, I'm going to be in my tall kneel. If that's not comfortable, find a nice position. Take one hand, put it behind your head. Take the other hand, place it up your back. This is what this looks like. From here, I'll do one back to you and then I'll turn around. From here, be gentle on this. Extend your arms. Slowly get to that T position. You're going to have to start rotating one hand. Now it switches, so that hand's now behind your head. Other hand goes up your back. Try not to touch your back here. Three, two, reach towards the floor. Pass through that T position. One hand behind your head. One hand working its way up your back. Check. Ribs, hips connected. Extend your arms. Keep those shoulders low as you pass through that T position. 
internal and external rotation. Ribs to hips, heads up, extend and switch one more time. Hand behind head, hand behind back, square up. Last one, reach long through our T, internally, externally rotate, and then back to center and shake it out. Nice. Back to all, all fours, and we're going to work for our upper back now. So we only moved our pelvis last time. Now we're going to only move our T-spine. Again, watch if you don't know, and then you can join. There'll be lots of time. I want you to find a neutral low back. That means not here, not here, but just somewhere right Goldilocks in between. Your abs are braced. Thinking about that upper back rib cage. Keep that neutral spine. And now you can barely see it, but I pull my shoulders down. I keep my chin tucked. And I think about lifting my heart or pushing my heart forward. And I feel that stretch work through my mid upper back. And then relax, but don't go anywhere. Okay, re-get that neutral pelvis again. I pull the floor towards me underneath. And I think about lifting my chest up through the front, almost as if somebody has a fist and they're pushing through my mid upper back. And then relax. I find this very challenging. One more time, neutral low back, pull the floor together and extend that upper back, chest pressing forward. I feel those vertebrae pushing through. Three, two, relax, easy and then come out of that position. Oh, shake it out. Don't come out of this position for too long. We're gonna be back into our all fours and we're going to explore our positions of our hips from all fours. We're gonna stand up, do some other things, and then we're gonna revisit those from standing in the end. Give those wrists a shake, come back to all fours. If you find this wrist extension too much, you can always do this with neutral fists. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Again, find that neutral position in our low back. Let's take one knee, bend it, lift it off the floor, and pull it as close to the elbow or chest as you can get it. And hold it. And hold it. Looks like I'm not doing anything, but I really am. I'm pulling that knee towards my elbow, but I'm keeping my tailbone long, so I'm not tucking under. Three, two, put that back down for a second. Let's do the same motion on the other side. Knee lifts, compress, keep the tailbone long as you pull your knee towards your elbow, towards your chest. Three, two, one, place that back down. We'll go the opposite way now. That was hip flexion. We'll do hip extension. Bend the first knee again. This time we're gonna kick the ceiling. Keep your abs braced. Slowly kick towards the ceiling. Check in with your low back. Am I cranking through my low back or keeping those abs braced? Here we go. Square to the floor, try to kick, fire up that glute from its butt. Three, two, and then pull the leg underneath. Switch, same thing other side. Neutral, abs braced, bend the knee. Slowly kick the ceiling. Oh, staying tucked. This side's a little harder for me. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. Five, four, three, two. Knee pulls underneath. We have one more move from here. Back to that first leg again. Bend it. This time we're going to take it out to the side and hold it. And hold it. And we're trying to lift that knee up and hold. But if I put a bowl of water on your back, you wouldn't spill it. So don't tip. Five, four, three, two, pull that leg back underneath. I'll give you a different change of angle so you can see that. Okay, bend the knee, lift it straight to the side. Don't let that back tip. I still try to keep weight even in both hands. Hold, knee stays bent. Four, three, two, Back underneath. Whew. Come up off your hands for a second. We're going to stand up. Maybe we'd like a drink. Maybe not. 
Let's take a look at this nice painting we have behind me. This is the change in scenery today. New artwork. This was Ian's Nana's painting. She painted this. Very lovely. Original piece of art. My rubber plant, look how tall it's gotten. Okay, back to focusing. We're gonna squat and crawl for a couple here. First squat of the day, our low campfire squat. Feet in your squat stand, slightly wider than hips, maybe slightly turned out. Standing up tall, we'll pull ourselves down into your low. Maybe you can get here, maybe this is low for you. I want you to hang out. We're gonna hang out up to 30 seconds here. That might be a long time. 30 seconds is long. Stand up, shake it out, and rejoin me. Noticing in my squat. My knees are over my toes, that's allowed. My chest is lifted, my spine is nice and long. None of this, lift your chest up. Hold yourself up, we have about another five seconds. Maybe you're here doing this and that's fine. Four, three, two, push yourself up out of that. Whew, shake it out. Mixing our squats with some crawling. Stationary or moving, I'm not gonna move that far, I'll move to the end of my mat and back. We're gonna start with our elephant. So tall, I'd like you to take your hands, chop your hips back, hinging, hands slowly find the floor, into what looks like that down dog position. I'm gonna push the floor away from me so my shoulders are into my ears. This is allowed for this drill. Slowly try to find those heels towards the floor, pushing my chest back, keeping my tail tilted to the ceiling. Maybe this is where I stay. If you'd like to add some movement, we take an opposite hand and foot and do a little B step, pushing my tail towards the ceiling, trying to keep my knees straight, trying to keep my heels down. Breathe, take a couple steps, maybe take a couple steps backwards if you've run out of room and hit a wall. Last couple, force those heels down, tilt the tail to the ceiling, Walk your hands back towards your feet. Hinge to come out of this, so drop those hips. Extend up tall. Whew. Shake it out. Good news. Another squat. I'm gonna go sideways, so you have my side profile here. So I'll be wider than my mat. Toes slightly turned out. This is our toaster squat though here. Oh, you're gonna see the true side profile. Okay, toaster squat, tall, tall. Tuck under. Slowly sit, driving those knees away from you. Sitting, sliding, knees pushing out. Would I get burned in my toaster? I don't know, maybe. Pushing back on those knees, holding. Three, two, now drive into the floor. Stand yourself up tall. Relax for a second. Whew. Toaster's, toast is going down, bread's going down, tuck. Slowly slide down. Don't touch the burners. Slide, slide, slide. Stay up tall. Drive those knees back from the glutes. Force them back. Stay up tall. Three, two, relax. We're gonna do one more for three. Whew, these are a lot of work today. Tuck, tall, knees push out. Slide, slide into your toaster. Maybe this time you're able to get a little bit further. Hold that position, stay tucked, drive the knees out, hold. Three, two, up to tall, shake it out. I hope that was work for you. I mean, it was so easy. Crawl number two, lizard. Today I'm gonna to be stationary just for reasons of space. Hinge at the hips. Walk yourself out to your tall, sorry, tall plank position. From your hands, bring your foot up beside your hand. Good. Pull your shoulders down. Now, start shooting energy out your back heel and your front knee. Hold. Three, two, brace your abs. Put that foot back to where you got it. Switch feet. Keep those hips high as you switch those feet. Try not to drop. Okay, energy same as the other side. Out the back heel, out the front knee. 
We're reaching away from each other this time. Four, three, two, brace, lift, switch. Back to that first side again. This time, energy is coming together. So pull your front leg towards your back leg, and your back leg pulls towards your front leg. Nothing's moving, but it's pulling. Hold. Three, two, keep that tension. Try to lift. Put it back. One more switch. Foot comes up. Again, tension's pulling together this time. Pull, pull, five, four, two. Keep that tight. Put the foot back. I want you to push back up and try to come up via that hinge or that inchworm fold, rolling yourself back up to tall. Whew. Yeah, that's good. All right, not a squat this time but a lunge. Take one foot in front and one foot back. I'm gonna straddle my mat here so my knee can land towards the floor. Actually, side profile again. Tall, tall. I'm on my back toe. As I lunge, I wanna make sure that that front shin stays vertical. So get a nice long stance. From here, tuck those hips under. See that, tail to this back, tail tucks. Keep that tuck position, stay tall, slowly, Keep that tuck and that butt squeeze slowly. Start descending through your lunge. You might have to adjust, there we go. Slowly start descending. Keep those hips level, keep tucked. I have a massive stretch here. I hope you do too. Stay tucked, I'm still moving. Slowly towards the floor, staying tucked. Three, two, whoa, soft landing. Oh, good, just keep under. Keep that back foot squeeze. Pull the floor together underneath you. Your knee is now resting on the floor. Pull together underneath you. Three, two, relax for a second. Get your hips back to level. Get tension between the two legs. We're standing up out of this. Inhale, brace. Try to hover off the floor. Push yourself up. Step together. I don't know about you, but I'm sweating. Let's do that same thing on the other side. Step your foot long, get set up, get organized. Up on your back toe. Okay, good. Tuck under, stay squares forward. Back knee starts to bend. It was about a 10 second descent here. Stay top, 10. Tucked under, hips pushing forward. Slow to the down. Slow, slow. Soft landing, whew, good. Stay here, pull the floor together underneath you. Back leg is tucked, pull. Four, three, two, relax for a second. Get tension, get ready to push up off the floor to stand up. Three, two, both legs up together. I did that differently last time, didn't I? It's all right, shake it out, still good. One more crawl. Our bear. Crawler. We've been doing a lot of forward back crawl. Let's try to crawl laterally. Let's come down to the floor. Give yourself room on one side because we're going to travel sideways. Come down to the floor, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Our bear crawl is where I put a bowl of water on your back and you don't tip it anywhere. And we walk opposite hand and foot, staying in that bear position. Again, if you don't know, let me show you first and then you join. Hands under shoulders, toes tucked, abs braced, pull the floor together underneath you. Lift your knees about two or three inches off the floor, hover. Let's just stay here. Create tension by pulling the floor together, brace your abs, you could take a punch. Four, three, two, relax down. If that's enough for you, keep holding that position. If you'd like to add some movement, we're gonna travel laterally. When we step, it's still opposite hand, opposite foot. So keep that contralateral gait. Pack shoulders, tuck toes, brace, lift. Maybe you stay there. Maybe you want to travel. Opposite hand and foot. No tipping side to side. Abs are braced the whole time. One more step that direction. Now let's work ourselves back to where we came from. No twisting. Hold that tension underneath you. Three, 
two, and soft down. Whew. Good work. Nice bears. We're going to stand up and put our hip circles together that we did earlier in a standing version. I'm going to get a chair so I have something to balance on. If you'd like to get a chair or something to balance on, do that right now. Okay. Let me just review. So from all fours, we held our hip flexor position, or flexion was this, and then we held our hip extension, which was that, and then we held our hip abduction, I believe. It's confusing, ab or ad, it's ab. We're gonna do that same thing, but from standing. All three positions first. Get your chair, as usual, tall on that inside leg that looks like this, not like this, tall. Bend your outside knee. Tuck, brace abs, pull your knee up towards your chest. Okay, once it's as high as it can go, hold it. Your hips should still be level, hold. Five, four, three, two, take your hand, put it on the front of your knee. Let your leg relax into your hand. So that's now passive here, it's just hanging out. Use your arm, pull your leg higher. When you let go with this arm, I want your leg to stay. Ready, set, let go, hold. Five, four, three, two, keep the knee bent. Reach it behind you. Extend at the hip. Now straighten the knee, pull underneath. Good, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side first. Just for easiness, I'm not gonna switch my chair. Bend your knee tall on this other leg, on the supporting leg. Remember, dumpy hip, good hip. Stay tall. Pull through to hip flexion. Keep that knee bent as much as you can. Hold your hip flexion position. You actively got there, hold it. Five, four, straight bottom leg, two. One, hand grips knee, you relax a little bit into that. Take a breath. Maybe you can pull the knee up higher. When you let it go, leave it there, set. Hold, five, four, three, two, keep it bent, keep it bent, keep it bent, extend at the hip to kick behind you, watch your low back, straighten the knee, roll over the toes and under. <sighs> I don't know if it's hot in here, I ran this morning, maybe I'm still running hot, but man, this is some work. Okay, that was only in one position, we have two more. We're going to our hip extension. I'll just give you my side profile. Bend the knee, okay, tuck hips, reach back from the glute, not the low back, hold. Keep reaching and holding, hold. Five, four, three, two, bring that knee forward a little bit, let it rest. Okay, I'm gonna give you bonus. If you want to do this, you can, you do not have to. Let's reach back, maybe grab your ankle with your foot. Sorry, grab your ankle with your hand. If you want, cramp up that tension in your hamstring. Slowly let go of the foot, but don't let it drop. Oh, don't let it drop, hold it. Keep reaching back, five, four, three, two. Bring the knee through, hip flex, down, let it rest. Uh, my hamstring yelled at me when I grabbed to try to hold. So that's normal, but be safe. Same thing, other side. Other legs tall, glutes squeezed, bend the knee, first hip extension. From here, reach back, squeeze the glute, kick the wall behind you. No twisting, no dipping, hold. Five, four, three, two. Leg relaxes, comes through a bit. If you want bonus, if not, just back to that hip extension. If you want bonus, grab that ankle, kick it, reach it back, slowly let go, but don't let it drop. Hold, five, four, still hip extension, three, two, knee comes through and relaxes down. Oh, I love hamstring. Whew. Shake that out. We have one more hip hold, and that's our abduction out to the side. Bend back to that first leg, tall on the inside. 
Bend that knee. Quads are flush. From the hip or from the leg only, so you won't see my belt line change, lift the leg out to the side. This is me lifting wrong, up from the hip. This is me lifting that leg. Hold. Knee stays bent. Keep lifting and holding. You should start to feel a butt cramp. Five, four, three, two. Bring it under to rest it, but don't go anywhere. We're going to do it again. I'll give you a side profile here. Bend the knee. Keep them quads in line. Slowly lift it to the side. And hold. I'm lifting from that glute. Holding level. Five, four, three, two. Leg comes under, straightens. Good old hips. We have one more side. I need the chair for this one. Bend. Abduction again. Bend. Away. Lift. Hold. Good. Do you see how I was kind of twisted there and then I straightened out my leg? Yeah, I'm sure you did. Good. Hold it. Five. Four. Three, two, pull that back under. So you can see when I'm doing it right, you can't even see my foot in the lower leg behind me. When I was twisted, you could. So if you can see yourself, try not to see that lower leg. Kick it back a bit. Keep those quads in line. Lift it to the side. Hips are still square. Don't let me see that lower leg. Hold. Five from the glute. Four, three, two, pull that leg back to, se oh, back to center and relax. Well, my hips are fired up. I hope yours are. Shake it out. And we're gonna finish on our back, well, on our backside, on the floor, doing a little rotation stretch. I'm going to face away from you to set up, and then I'll be rotating towards you. We're doing our nice T-spine stretch. Lying on the floor on your side, take your bottom leg and straighten it out long. Take your top leg, bring it up. Maybe that's a silly way to do that. I'll show you this way first, sorry. Lying on your side. Bottom leg is straight, top leg comes up, bottom arm grips that top knee. Pack that shoulder. If you need a pillow, get one, but take that top arm out of your head and out of your upper body, gently crunch forward. Now reach long out of your head on your upper body and find the floor with your head. It's gonna be slightly behind you. From here, take a nice inhale. Exhale, roll yourself open. I'm still reaching long with that bottom leg. That top knee is up and over, blocking me from rolling through the hips. I'm breathing with each exhale. I'm trying to wring myself out a little bit more. Inhale. Exhale, try to wring yourself out a bit more. Pull yourself back to stacked. Let's do one more. Gentle crunch forward. Reach long. Take a nice inhale. Exhale. Roll open. Ooh. Pull yourself back on straight. Either roll away from me or switch sides. Same thing, other side. Find that sideline position first. Bottom leg is straight. Top knee comes up to at least belly button or hip level. Top arm crosses across the body. First, we crunch a little bit forward. Then we reach long at the top back. We find the floor. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, roll. Inhale. Exhale, ring yourself out. One more, inhale. Exhale, ring yourself out. Pull yourself back on straight. One more time. Crunch a little forward. Reach long first, then roll, breathing, rotating. Last exhale to rotate further. 
pull back to center and relax. Nice. Well, I had a great time here with you. I hope you also enjoyed my company this morning and from our different location. We'll be varying our location up here and there. Uh, today is Sunday, so we're off tomorrow. It's Canada Day, so we're going to have a Canada Day special workout this week, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, Tuesday night will be our next live class, Strength and Swings at 5 p.m., a little more advanced kettlebell class. Otherwise, we'll see you soon. Stay tuned to your schedule when we'll see you next. Thank you for coming. I'm Lauren from Bars and Bells. Check out our website, barsandbells.com, for memberships. Otherwise, like, comment, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for coming.